Today in our 2009 Dodge Ram 2500, we'll be having a look at and installing the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for the rear axle, part number F2299. All right, here's what our airbags look like installed. These are a quick and simple installation and offer us a great alternative to having a saggy suspension in the back of our truck. It'll offer us an improved ride quality, better handling, and better braking when we're towing a heavy load or if we have a lot of weight in the bed. These airbags will allow us to run anywhere between 5 and 100 PSI of air pressure in them. At 100 PSI, these bags will offer us 5,000 pounds of weight leveling capability. What that means is if we have 5,000 pounds of tongue weight on our gooseneck or fifth wheel trailer, or 5,000 pounds of weight in the bed, we'll be able to maintain a factory ride height. These do not give us an additional 5,000 pounds of weight carrying capacity or towing capacity. They will just supplement our vehicle suspension and make it have a higher quality ride when we're loading our truck down and using it for its full potential. Now, unlike some of our competitor airbags that are offered for this particular truck, these do not have an internal jounce bumper inside of them. Well, I think that's actually a good thing because if you've ever felt your axle slam down on your jounce bumper, it's a real solid feel and it's kind of a jarring ride. By not having that, this will give us a little bit smoother ride going down the road as we're going over bumps. We'll inflate our airbags to about 70 PSI. Get some measurements of our truck with no weight in it with factory suspension. We'll just measure from the center line of our wheel up to the top of our wheel arch. We're about 41 inches here in the back. We'll go double check the measurements in the front now. We're about 40 inches in the front. So we're gonna write down these measurements and compare them to when we have a lot of weight in the bed of the truck. Okay, now we have a substantial amount of weight in the bed of our truck. We'll double check our measurements and see how they changed. Okay, we're about 39 and a half inches in the rear. So we lost about an inch and a half. Okay, the front's about 40 and a half. So we gained about half an inch. What happens when we have a lot of weight on the back of our truck or we're towing a heavy trailer, our back end will come down and the front end will rise. This will decrease our braking ability, our stability and our handling and also change our headlight angle. Our headlights will be going more towards the sky and less towards the road, making us easier to blind on coming drivers and less effective use of our headlights. All right, now with our airbags installed and our weight back in the bed of our truck, we'll double check our measurements and see where we're at. So we're back at 41 inches in the rear, so we've maintained our factory ride height. Let's double check the front. All right, we're back at 40 inches in the front, which means we're back at the factory ride height as well. All right, now we'll take it down our test course. There's a lot of swaying during evasive maneuvers, and there's a lack of control. It's more stable with less body roll and significantly less harshness going over bumps. And now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to install the airbags. Underneath our vehicle, we'll find two bump stops, one on each side, right next to our leaf springs directly above our axle. We have two 15 millimeter bolts that hold them in place. We'll remove them. Okay, we can discard these bump stops and these bolts because we will not be reusing them. Okay, this is our lower bracket that will sit on top of our axle. There's two different sides to it. We have a narrow side here and a wide side here. The narrow side will sit in between the leaf spring U-bolts if you have a gasoline engine. If you have a diesel engine, you'll use the wider side. In our case, we'll be using the wider side since ours is a diesel. Now, since ours is a diesel and this is the side that's going between the U-bolt, we'll be using this hole here furthest away from it to secure the bottom section of our airbag to. And we'll just use a bolt and finger tight in it into place. Okay, now we'll assemble our upper frame bracket into place. As you'll see, it's marked two different locations. These two holes are for two wheel drive trucks. These two holes are for four wheel drive trucks. Our truck today is four wheel drive. So we'll slide in this other bracket into place and secure it with the provided hardware. OK, 
Okay, now we'll snug these bolts and nuts down and torque it to spec. Okay, now we'll take our bracketry, hold it up to where our bump stop was, and secure it with the flathead hex bolts that have Loctite on them. Okay, now we'll use a six millimeter hex bit and run down our hardware. Okay, now we'll install our airline fitting into our airbag. And we'll tighten this down until our thread sealant goes down as far as possible. Okay, now we'll slide our airbag assembly into place. Cool thing about it being an airbag, we can squeeze it on down to get the room that we need. Okay, we got our one tab lined up in place around the U-bolt. Now we just need to bring this on down. To do that, you can just gently tap it with a hammer. Okay, now that it's in the slots for our U-bolt and sitting flush against our axle, we can now push down our airbag and go through the appropriate hole to give us the best vertical adjustment for our airbag. I'm in the front hole right now, but the top of our airbag is not engaging properly. If you see this pin right here, that's supposed to go in one of these smaller holes. I tried the front one and it didn't line up properly. Now I'll try this back one. It locks in nicely there. So we'll be using the back hole in ours. Okay, now we'll drop on our star washer over our air fitting and secure it with our three quarter inch nut. Okay, we'll now torque that to the specifications found in the instructions. All right, so once we have this torqued, we'll snug up our bottom bolt. Okay, we'll use a ratcheting wrench for this because it's a tight squeeze. Okay, it's helpful to hold your wrench up in place with either a pry bar or a screwdriver, just so it doesn't slip off the bolt head. And we'll just snug this on down. Again, a ratcheting wrench is very helpful because it's a tight squeeze and you can't get much of a swing on it with a standard wrench. Okay, now we'll drop down our U-bolt between our airbag and our leaf spring pack. And it goes into the notch in our lower bracket. Place on our strap here for the axle onto the U-bolt and secure it with our flange nuts. Now we use a 916 socket and tighten up these nuts. I want to make sure we go evenly. Okay, with these both torqued, we'll now repeat the same process on the passenger side of our truck, making sure we put in our heat shield between the top of our airbag and our upper frame bracket. And with the exception of the heat shield, our passenger side is exactly the same way. It just goes right between the top of our airbag and our upper frame bracket here. And when we install it, we want to make sure that we have it directing the heat from the closest point of our exhaust away from the airbag. So if we have it at this angle here, it'll deflect the heat nicely and protect our airbag. Okay, we went ahead and took our airline and cut it into two equal pieces, one for either side of our vehicle. Now, we want to make sure our airline has a straight cut. As you can see right here, this one's not straight, it's at an angle. We'll be using an airline tubing cutter to achieve this. It's part number F9009. We have these available on our website if you'd like to purchase one. So we'll get in there nice and squared up, cut it off, and make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, that's a nice straight cut there. We want to make sure we have this on all of our connection points. 
Okay, we'll just take her airline fitting and go down and push it in securely. Or we'll take our airline hose and push it securely into our fitting. Once it stops, we'll pull back on it and make sure it's secure. If you ever need to remove one of these, you just push down here and it'll pull out. Ours is in there nice and secure now. We'll route this back towards the rear of the vehicle, making sure we avoid any moving parts or sources of heat. Okay, so our airline, we routed to the rear of our vehicle, secured it up here with a zip tie to this wiring harness, and we went above our two cross member braces in our frame that hold our spare tire up. Got one here towards the front, another here towards the back, and we have it secured to a zip tie again, this wiring harness. We repeated the same process on the passenger side with one slight exception that we'll show you now. Before we plug our airline into our fitting, we'll want to slide on this heat shield to help protect it from the exhaust. Here, okay, if that's slid on, we'll plug our line into our fitting. Okay, now we'll use our no drill bracket and attach it to the side of our hitch. This will give us a place to install our airline fittings to air up our airbags. Let's we'll use the included zip ties for that. Okay, that gives us a nice secure mount for our fittings to air up our airbags. We have the option here of having a separate fitting for each airbag so we can air them up independently. However, if you plan on installing a compressor, you have two different options there too. If you buy a dual stage compressor, you can each air up each airbag independently. If you only buy a single stage compressor, you don't have any control over how they're aired up. They both air up equally. In our case, our customer will be installing a single stage compressor later. So what we're gonna do is tie both of our lines together with the T-fitting that we have available on our website, and then have the airline come out of that to just one fitting. That way, if our compressor ever goes bad, we still have a manual inflation point. Okay, so we'll start off by taking our inflation port here, take the nut off, place on a flat washer, go through our bracket, place on another flat washer, and reinstall the nut. We'll hold the fitting in place with a wrench and use a socket to snug it down. Don't need to go overly tight, just enough to hold it in place. Okay, we'll pull our two air lines close together and we'll measure off where they intersect. And we'll cut off the excess, making sure we have a little bit of slack left in our lines in case we need it ever. Use our airline tubing cutter here again. Make sure we get a nice square cut. Okay, we'll take our T-fitting here. Plug our line into it. Make sure it's secure. Do the same on the other line. Now we're gonna measure off about a foot of our air line. Cut off the excess. And we'll plug our T, and then plug our inflation port in too. All right, now that we have all of our connections made, we'll inflate our airbags to about 70 PSI and check our system for leaks. We used to use some soapy water here and spray down all of our connection points, including our fill area. And we're looking for bubbles. If we see bubbles like this, that's not a problem. If we see lots of little small bubbles, we know we have a leak. Bubbles like this just from the soapy water we're using. And that completes our look at and installation of the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for the rear axle, part number F2299 on our 2009 Dodge Ram 2500. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.